Hi there, and welcome to Bustonet. Yes, this is the FM Tactics Show. This is Gloucester City. We are now a professional club. We've been that for a while. We got a five star reputation. We are rich, and well, we've done okay. We've done all right. Um, for the last couple of seasons, our goal was to win the title, and we've done that. We've also won the Champions League twice. Um, uh, however, the season ended on a bittersweet note. I wanted to end the show last season after winning the title, but then something happened in the Champions League final. We got clobbered in the Champions League final. It was an utterly terrible performance. I was, I really, this was one show I almost smashed the monitor in. I mean, one shot on target. We, we played okay, you know, you could make an argument that we may have played okay, but seriously we really performed so badly in this match, we only really had one shot on target, and even then most of our shots were outside the box in fact, we only had one shot inside the box, just one just one, that's it miserable, <laughs> one solitary shot inside the box I could I could chalk this down to the fact that maybe, you know, I was trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, right? I may not have the players for it. So I gave myself that, that as an excuse. So what do I do? End of the season, I go out there and I decide to plonk 89 million on all these players. Yes, we brought in a whole slew of players to give me all kinds of options when I play tactics. Yes, a lot of these players are still 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I've gone for youth. Except for one or two players, I plonked quite a lot of money on. Bettino and Jackman. Kevin Jackman are the big, two big players. A striker. We have got three strikers, four strikers now. But the whole goal was to start the season off with the 4-4-2. Now, the 4-4-2 has turned into quite an interesting little system that I've been using. It gives me options. I have lots of options. But the challenge with playing the 4-4-2... Is precisely that it is challenging because the positioning of the central players, some of the wide area, some of the wide positioning of the wider players, you gotta really crack your head because I found that along the way changes needed to be made to my system. Going back to some of my transfers, I've made some interesting decisions this season. Okay, so I've got I brought several players in who. I've retrained, like um, this player, Sergio Zuniga, I, I'm, I don't even know whether I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He comes in, he's a hot prospect, he's young, he's a tireless midfielder, br brought him from final. And in fact, I really raided a few Dutch clubs for my signings. I just went, oh, good, has got the attributes, you're coming in. Now, guess what? He's supposed to be playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder or a defensive midfielder, right? No. I'm retraining him to be a fullback. Why am I retraining him to be a fullback? I kind of like midfielders to be fullbacks because um, they they usually have passing decisions, they first touch. So it's a lot of the things they already have. And if they have tackling, that's it. Come, be my fullback. So I've gotten him to be my fullback and he's performed pretty well. But I'm retraining him not as a fullback. Yes, I'm retraining him as an inverted wingback. We want to do evil, evil things with the system right now. So I've got a few players are retraining them as inverted wing back. So Marcio Agostinho retraining him as an inverted wing back too. So I've got like some players like I got the 16 year old boy who he was 16 when I roped him in. He was, this is a classic. Okay, I see five stars or four and a half stars and I go, I want him. Naturally, we have to remember scouting isn't accurate, right? So I'm really might be shooting myself in the foot. I don't care. I just need youngsters in my team because I don't really have an under-23 team. So we brought all these players in so they can go into an under-23 team so I can stick a few more players in so I can actually have an under-23 team because uh, the academy isn't really producing anybody at the moment. So we want to go out there and uh, get some players in so that we can add them to our team and get them going so that we can have some kind of a you know, footballing culture in our club. Okay, coming back to my place. Enough of this waffling. All right, so uh, with all these players in, they're all going to be playing in new positions. And uh, we've been using um, the 4-4-2. For, and I haven't gone into the results yet. The interesting thing about the 4-4-2, and we're already in November. So, yes, I couldn't wait. After Mourinho, I had to play the game. So I went on this like binge run. So I started playing lots of games and I just want to get into the you know get to that Champions League. I hope to God I face him again because that's the only player that manager I want to face. I want to meet PSG again. So uh 
earlier on when I was using the 442, I was okay, right? That was towards the tail end of last season. I was still getting my feet, you know, I was you know, just getting my feet wet. I haven't been playing a 442, so there are a lot of options. The problem with the 442 is wide area positioning. These two guys, sometimes they hold hands. Sometimes these two guys out wide, they don't want to see anybody else. They just want to hang out on the flanks and go, hey, I'm on the flanks, guys. You're on your own. So I was seeing a lot of that going on. And I was thinking to myself, hang on a minute. I've forgotten how to play the game, have I? So I changed things around and um, several things happened. First, you know, I forgot how to play narrow. I've been mean, playing narrow tactics for so long, I've completely forgotten how to make a 4 2 play narrow. Then I remember, oh yeah, there's a simple solution, change mentality. So that's why we did change mentality. Voila, we're playing narrow. And um, we also looked at other strategies as well, like, you know, changing roles and duties to make them, you know, work more together as a cohesive unit. So that's what we did with the 4 2 I have done a show called um, Mentality and how you can use that to affect with. Uh, it's a how-to show. I, I actually spend a lot of time explaining um, how you look at width in a transitional setting. So that means when you when you when your team goes from defense midfield and attack, you know, the width all changes. So how does it how does this work? And how does mentality affect it? So I've done that video. So if you really want to have an in-depth um, explanation, that video has it all. This video is about tactics, right? So um, what the 442 that there are actually more than two three variations i've got like something like six variations of the 442 so i've got this variation as well with double inverted wing backs um and i've got one more variation with uh, no wing backs i've got one variation with just one wing back and sometimes it depends on the game sometimes i go into a game these guys become a target man this guy becomes a poacher uh it depends on the situation that i'm facing and in most cases there are certain things i always do the first thing i do is I make sure that I don't play, I, I hardly ever play on very fluid, I play more on structured and flexible shapes because um, if, if if I play on a lower mentality and I play on those very fluid shapes, I become so condensed that um, I'm give, I've am i given up the flanks. But there are times when I do that too. There are times when I give up the flanks and I allow the team to attack me, then I put like, all my like, jumpers all in the middle so that I just want the AI to cross cross drop crosses in so i can hit them away in fact uh, our run so far has been pretty good um yes fantastic 442 but all each 442 was adapted some in some matches i played a 442 basic you know fullback fullback some matches i played with a uh inverted wing backs um this match against in this match there was one match uh, against manchester united i played with an inverted wing back because i wanted i played with two inverted wing backs in this system i don't think we can see this yeah we they, they had this very strong central pairing so i played with in one inverted wing back to put some pressure if i see hijack here it means i wasn't using an inverted wing back he was a full back so we only had one inverted wing back to put pressure on the two here so we can keep the ball away from them but something actually interesting happened in this match against Inter Milan I found this to be a very very interesting game we started the match out on standard flexible but we quickly fell behind to a goal from a throw in Sumi so I got pissed uh, and so I changed my mentality switched to control flexible we managed to do something we managed to score two goals and uh, pull ourselves back uh, and at that point I was thinking fine this is going to be interesting we are playing with an inverted wing back on the same flank they have an attacking wing back on so okay this this sounds like a nice match however something very very interesting happened after we went to one ahead lo and behold we start the second half AI goes narrow for 2 three, one. I didn't spot this now uh, we were already playing on control flexible so this is pretty wide the problem with uh, the 4231 narrow is that it's going to punch you right through the middle, and that's the weakness of the 442, the middle of the. right in front of the two central defenders. And during this transition phase, when I lost the ball after a field attack, this is when I, it dawned on me I have to do something. So the easiest fix is actually to change your mentality because you can't really change your width defending narrow any other way. So uh, we dropped the standard flexible. The good thing is we have got two decent uh, jumpers in the middle who can um, defend against crosses. So 
my goal here is to invite them to go down the flanks and try and drop in crosses because if they're going to come through the middle we'll be quite congested uh, my my back four will sit a bit more narrower and uh, I'm hoping that as my boys drop back being flexible they drop back they hold their shape a bit more so they're going to have to try and get past two banks or four in order for them to uh, score failing which they have to go around my defence narrowing the angle for the shot on goal and if they go down the flanks if I'm lucky my my midfielder might decide to get involved and which happened like that uh, so this kept on going for a while and I was pretty happy with the whole situation because all we got to do is stand firm and hold them back because they're not going to beat me in the air because our players are better in the air and defensively and it didn't take us long for us to score a third goal and all we had to do was defend narrow by changing mentality. So it's something that uh, I slowly come... I, I mean, I totally forgot all about this. Um, I've been playing narrow for 3 one 2 so, so long. I haven't really been playing a lot of wide systems that... Um, yeah, I kind of forgot. The best way to defend narrow is to play on a lower mentality. And of course, you want to choose the right rules and duties too. I'm not too unhappy. We played quite well. I was pretty impressed with our performance and... No, we're coming to grips with uh, using the 4-4-2 a bit more effectively. In fact, this whole season has been about using the 4-4-2. Uh, sometimes I play with an inverted wing back, sometimes I don't, sometimes I, I go narrower, sometimes I go wider. It all depends on the situation in the game. However, there have been two nasty little teams. All right. The first team was Southampton. I had such a hard time playing against their system. We tried everything i threw everything at them in fact i even did a double inverted wing back this time uh these two fullbacks started the game i was playing an orthodox fullback system and uh then it didn't work then i went and had uh this guy plays an attacking player this guy playing as an attacking winger because i was hoping to stretch them that didn't work i took these two guys off i pulled this guy to the right turned him into in inverted wing back to penetrate this team it didn't work. We managed to score two goals. But heck, we had such a hard time against Southampton. Southampton put in a shift. And, well, kudos to them. They became the first side to prevent, stop me on my winning streak. Then, it, as if, like, they sent each other a love message, uh, Chelsea come up and they go from a 4 2 3 1. This is even more interesting. Chelsea. We took the early goal in the 25th minute. Chelsea equalised and immediately switched to a 4-1-4-1. -1 -1. The moment they scored the goal, immediately after they scored the goal, they swapped to a 4-1-4-1. -1 -1. And I was like, damn shit. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Chelsea, FM me. And it was very... I mean, look at that scoreline. Chelsea won. Lost to City won. Chelsea only had one shot on target. One shot on target. And it really pissed me off. Because the moment they swapped to the 4 one 4 I couldn't break them down as well. So Chelsea were very solid defensively. So some teams are beginning to figure out how we are playing. And uh, Inter Milan almost tried the four two three one narrow and almost got away. So it's become quite interesting. I, I kind of like uh, how the four four two is panning out. Because, as you can see, I, I have, uh, from here alone, I have like three variations of the 442. In fact, I have six variations of the 442. I just adapt as I go. And it all depends on the system that I'm facing. So our next match is going to be against Everton. They play at home. Uh, even at home, they play with this uh, 4231, which is pretty deep and they have a struggle against teams that have played the 4 2 3 one against them and I have to be wary of this 4 2 3 one there's a lot of combination play going on between Dixon and Watt process so I need to separate or isolate their two defensive midfielders I have some issues going into this game um, the first issue that I have is I don't have a few players. Zay Gomez is injured for two to three weeks and um, Bettino, my top two strikers are not available. So that's a major loss. So uh, we'll have to play two boys who, well, they never thought they'd get a chance to be playing a lot of the games. So we're going to get uh, Costa to work with Sindale. I hope they work well together. I haven't really been able to find out. Uh, Abel Calado is available. He was suspended in the last match. Uh, so this is the lineup that I have. Colado is a bit aggressive sometimes, but uh, I think in this game, we will probably need him to be 
aggressive, um, hoping that he isn't too aggressive. Uh, on the flanks, we've got Agostinho, Bothwick, Jackson, but since I'm playing with a fullback on defense, I'd rather have Frantisek Hajek playing there. If I wanted to use an inverted wing back, I'll use him. This uh, group in midfield is uh, I. The good thing is I have quite a number of players. I'll this cooker, whatever he's, however we pronounce his name, he's pretty solid. Youngster is 21 years old, and uh, I can actually go with Almedo on the flanks. He can tackle. He's got anticipation. He can't really cross. But I just need a playmaker here. And uh, the options are Cesar Lopez, who is not getting many games, and uh, Julian Germano. These are the two players I have at the moment. I'm more likely to choose Cesar Lopez for this game instead of Julian Germano. Because uh, Lopez actually has uh, passing, crossing, dribbling. And um, he is also not a bad player to have in a pinch. Uh, we plan to go a control flexible for this match against Everton. So this is the time for the match. So here we go. Everton versus Gloucester City will submit the team sheet. And hopefully we do okay. Um, I've got TI set up for everyone. I'll just run through them really quickly. Except for this guy. I need to remove this. And then we've got these guys on TIs. Now there's a strong possibility I may get into trouble using these TIs as well. Um, because we are playing on key highlights, I won't have time to react. So I might have to make changes really quickly to some of the TPIs. Because uh, I'm worried about picking up yellow cards and not having the time to spot certain things happening. Like maybe a player is just too fast for my ball winning midfielders and they might get into trouble and I need to make a change. So, yep. This is it. The show is long enough already. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm playing on key highlights when I usually play all my matches when I'm playing a 4-4-2 nearly on comprehensive. So it's 10 minutes in, 11 minutes in. We're seeing a lot more possession from the opposing side, but we're doing okay. Ooh, Abel Colado hitting it just wide. That was a glorious opportunity for Gloucester City. A clear-cut chance, open goal. Abel Colado misses from inside the penalty box. Colado again to Zuniga. Zuniga to Pipoli. Pipoli has a chance to go wide. He beats the player, crosses it in, and it's a great start. It's a goal for Sindela. <laughs> what a goal from Pipoli. Cross, rather. That was a cross I was waiting to see. Pipoli with the cross, beating the player with his speed, gets it inside. And oh, that was a beautiful cross. Sindela uh, getting inside and scoring. Okay, so uh, no time to react. We have to watch. <laughs> uh, okay. See, when you're watching on key highlights, there's not much time for you to make a change. So we, we got off to a great start. I don't know whether they're attacking me centrally or down the flanks. Uh, so I have to just pop out. I know this makes the show a bit longer, but at least I have a chance to at least figure some things out very quickly. Um, okay. Able, okay, that's it. Colado has got a yellow card. I have to make a change. Now, this is my worry with the ball winning midfielder on defend duty plus playing all those opposition instructions. So, what I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the opposition instructions where Sean Watt Pros is playing and tell them to go normal. Tell them to go normal on these two guys first. That's the first thing. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to first, first, that's the first thing, right? The second thing is probably I'm going to tell uh, him to change his role, Brun skill. But it's such an integral part to how I play. Getting those guys to uh, break their legs. Yes, I am not a friendly player. We believe in the old adage, if it works, break it. 1P. Boom. Okay. Another corner. So I'm toying with the idea of changing um, Colado into a... Yeah, we'll change him into a cent central midfielder on defense. Ah, this is the thing I didn't want. You see this thing jumped up? That's why I didn't want to see. Now his mentality is a bit higher, slightly higher than the rest. Uh, so we're going to give him fewer. This 
close him down and ease off tackles. Then I'm going to go to opposition instructions and place hard tackling on this guy again and hard tackling on this guy again. Okay, Butlin, don't be an idiot. Colado does brilliantly. He wins the ball back. Hajek to Lopez to Alpa. Alpa to Costa. 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 Costa, don't be an idiot. Costa, I don't worry. You, I am being an idiot. Oh my God, gets a free kick. Okay. Uh, Nathan Dickinson now gets a yellow card. Back to watching on key highlights. Enough of that. I'm hoping that I, made a, I, I didn't make a mistake. Bothwick Jackson f commits a foul. Okay. Zuniga has also picked up a card. All right. There we go. Second half's underway. Holy coly. Okay. 3 for 3. Oh, man. This AI is really beginning to annoy me. Okay. Attacking 3 for 3 is going to come down the flanks. Uh, we have numbers in midfield. Um, three central defenders. Inverted wing back. Might be a risk. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna. No, we're playing. First up, we're gonna turn you into. We're gonna turn you into defend duty. I'm still gonna leave my inverted wing back on the right flank. Just watch. I, d I don't have much time to spot the difference. Something tells me I need to convert Zuniga into a fullback on support. And something just happened. Okay. That something was the corner. <laughs> okay. I'm just panicking. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so you're going to be a fullback on support. Let's go. And they cross. No. I saw that in slow motion. My God, I never seen a goal like this. The idiot of a goalkeeper. I don't believe it. Why? Why does this have to happen to me? We're about to go down for the count. Pipoli loses out to Butuba. My word, what a horrific goal to concede. Nelson to Brunskill. Brunskill shoots, hits the side post. My word, I've never seen that goal ever in my entire life. It's like, that's slow torture. You just saw it happen. It's slow torture. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to score. We're going to score, but it doesn't happen to me. Okay, never mind. It's all right. Pipoli with the corner. He'll get it and uh, gives it to the bloody keeper. 60. Am I watching this on key highlights? Yes, I am. Oh my God, we are so screwed. Fushat shoots, Butler makes the save. Right. Um, actually, the problem is I'm not looking at the game again. See, every time I do this, I, I swear to God, you see, when you do a YouTube, when you do something on YouTube, you're, not, you're talking and you're talking and you're talking and you don't spot things. And I'm not really paying attention because I get emo about this stupid game. Dixon to Ward Pros, Ward Pros, Zuniga, thank God for you. Costa, you're off. It is here, breaks my train of throat. Costa, what the f are you doing? See the lad to Alpach. Something almost flew at the monitor. It was that close. I was holding a bottle, okay? And the monitor is there. My God, how the f did he miss that? I mean, the work was done. All he had to do was. Put the ball in the back of the net. The boys did so well on the break. Oh, there is no joy sometimes in this game. We had such a great chance to get the winner. Alpa, Cocker, that's your name now. You cock. 
song and a half. Putoba into the box. Ward Pro is rising up. Bortwick Jackson, we're going to make a change. Alper, you cockamini idiot. Get off the pitch. I know he's 6.8. You should be playing well, but screw you. <laughs> you get off the pitch. That was a gro. Okay, I'm so mean. He's only 21 years old. He seriously is only a kid. And he's made that mistake and I'm yanking him off and telling him, scolding him as he comes off. He's only 21. You shouldn't do that to a 21-year-old. How would you feel if you were in that game and you missed the chance like that? You're only 21. And you... project to what pros to Dickinson. Collado is a danger, but he's got support. And then Brunskill comes, gives it to Pushat, and then they hit the upright again. Everton are playing so well. They, this 3-4-3 is ripping into me. My 4-4-2 is... Oh my god, Abel Collado is 6.1. I've taken off the wrong guy. Happy <laughs> Polly. To Cinderella. Gee, Eva Claro is 6.1. He's like confused. He's like, what the hell? You took off my my lover. I don't want to play anymore. They shoot. Butler makes another save. They clear the danger, but they give the ball back to Jack. Okay, there's not much time left in the game. Jack Butler now with a goal kick. This has been a hilarious game. Off to Cinderella, Cinderella to Pipoli, Pipoli does well, gets it to Olmedo, Olmedo will play it out to Cinderella and the referee will call time. <sighs> yes, it was not good enough. Everybody see, okay, this is the thing about it, body language, right? Looking nervous, looking nervous, seem motivated. Looking nervous, seem motivated. Looking very nervous, nothing specific, noted. Okay, and he's resolute. <laughs> Looking never seem motivated. Seem composed, look fired up. Seriously. We play like dog shit. So that's our third draw now. So our run of good results has quickly come to a screeching halt. And now we have a big game against Man City coming up, followed by a match against Bayern Munich. So you saw it here. My 4-4-2 and this fantastic goal that the AI scored which is basically an own goal that happened in slow motion. It was so good that it's happening really slowly right now and you can't really see the goal. That's how slow it is. The commentary was a bit fast though. And um, all good things must come to an end. Yes, and after this, well, we are going to start looking at your tactics too. So if you want your tactics to be part of the show, just send in your tactics. I don't know whether I can any better than what I just did and who knows but we've got a lot of players in the squad now so there's a lot of depth much better than last season so we can try a few more tactics so just just drop them on send space or Dropbox put the link down below and I'll get back to you once again I'd like to thank everybody for supporting this show whether you're a patron or not it doesn't really matter uh, just subscribe like the show and if you have questions I'll always try to do a how-to show for you too so Thank you for watching the show. I'll catch up with you guys again soon. You take care. Bye-bye.